Hello everybody, it's Paul King once again. Today's little video is on the 1957 to 1961 F-Series Vauxhall Victor. And the video is on the genuine accessories that you could buy for that car. So to describe the models, I've used pictures from the genuine brochures. And this particular one is a 1957 Series 1 standard model. And again, this is the 1957 Series 1 Supermodel. And there are only the three models, uh, Series 1s. That's the Standard, Super and in 58, the Estate. And we move on to 1959, Stroke 1960, Series 2 Standard Model. And this is the 1959 Stroke 60 Series 2 Super. And the only difference between the uh, 59 and the 60 are the coach bolts that hold the front bumper. In 1959 they were hidden, but in 1960 and 61 they were visible. 1959-1960 with the Series 2 came the Deluxe model. And the major differences between the Deluxe and the Super were individual front seats, leather upholstery, fully carpeted front and rear, and nice little gold badges on both front doors and two-tone paint. And let's not forget the 5960 Series 2 estate car. So the date is now the 15th of August 1960 when the 1961 model was launched. Some people called it the Series 3, but it never was. So what were the differences between the 60 and the 61? Well, the 61 sported a bar grill instead of the honeycomb. It had a badge in the center of it. And above that, on the leading edge of the bonnet, the emblem was removed and the individual letters spelling out Vauxhall appeared. The boot lid on the vertical section either side of the number plate, there were louvers. But the major differences were the dashboard, completely redesigned, nothing like the old one, very stylish. Uh, the horn ring was also uh, of a different style. All the switches were all completely different. So really the dashboard and everything around it was completely redesigned. Um, and of course, the obvious feature of the 61 model was that huge rear window, much, much bigger than the original. Oops, nearly forgot to say the last picture was the 1961 standard model and this is the 1961 Super. Uh, notice the Victor badge is now moved up from the wing and it's now incorporated in the front wing flute. The Super badge on the rear wing is of a different style as well and the diamonds are now missing from the roof probably because of that large rear screen. So we've got the 61 Deluxe here. Uh, not a lot of difference between the 61 Deluxe and the 60 Deluxe. Um, just the, the rear screen, of course, again, still being larger. The dashboard, as I've already said, the flutes, uh, the louvers on the boot lid. Really, really the same as the 60 Deluxe. Well, the 1961 Estate was really the same as the 1960 Estate with obviously the 61 differences. That's it, that's the uh, model of cars done. Now let's get on to what we're really interested in and that's the approved accessories. This is the original uh, accessory brochure printed in January 1957. Of course, no reference to Series 1 or Series 2 because <laughs> there weren't any. But this is what the brochure looks like opened up. Now I've joined these two pictures together just so you can see what it looks like. Uh, this is the back page. Did you work it out? This is the other side. Right, that ends the Series 1 brochure, and now we'll move on to the Series 2, which really includes the Series 1 anyway. Three-valve radio was also used in the PA Series cars. Um, they also had a different tuning panel, so you had to get the right one for the right car. The um, three-piece telescopic aerial always sat on the offside front wing, even in the left-hand drive cars. Yes, would you believe it, the heater was an accessory. Um, the one you see in this picture is from the Series 1 and early Series 2s. The later one was much squarer and um, it had a defrost lever, if I remember rightly. On the early cars, the screen jets were located on the wiper spindle housings and they look very neat. But later on, they produced the classic chrome circular one that sat in the middle of the scuttle panel. Under the bonnet, you had the classic jam jar produced by Trico. Uh, Jaguars also used them as well. And those black lids are now being reproduced to look like the originals. 
and this was all operated by the wiper switch which had a little vacuum housing adapter screwed to the top of it. Now if memory serves me right, these uh, fog lamps were produced by Lucas but um, they were customised with the letter V moulded into the little torpedo projectile in the centre. Uh, I never did own a set of those but uh, I don't know. Uh, I think they spoiled, spoiled the front of the car but that's just a personal view. Personally my favourite page of the whole lot starting with the pair of bonnet emblems that would uh, adorn a Series 1's bonnet that had the two chrome ribs on it. Now the Series 1 emblems had four feet that made them sit on those ribs perfectly. The Series 2's which only had one rib on the bonnet did not have the feet and that made them sit uh, correctly on the bonnet. The new view mirror with the uh, four sided mirror on a short straight arm, that's correct, that's what I had on uh, XOT. The spring back mirror, uh, which is a curved arm and a circular glass, yep, that's correct. Never did see the rigid mirrors, uh, and I think the styled mirror, yeah, I've seen a few of those, but the rigid one, no, never saw one. Oh yes, here it is, you F it to nuts, it's the electric clock. Yes, the most sought after accessory of all of them. You, if you found one today, you'd be looking at £300 plus, and that wouldn't even be boxed or with the instructions to fit it. Now, did you know that there were three different electric clocks during the life of the F-Series? In 1957 to 58, the face was in black and it had red hands. In late 58 to 60, it was a blue face with blue hands. And for the 1961 model, it was a blue face with white hands. So you all run into your cars now to see if you've got the right one, aren't you? The cigarette lighter was styled the same as the uh, choke pull. Um, didn't have a letter in it, of course, because it would have been a C, which would have confused it with the choke. <laughs> well, it's a parcel shelf, isn't it? What can you say apart from the cardboard had a velour coating on it, which made it look a bit posh. Uh, moving on to the roof rack. Yeah, it was a standard roof rack. I never ever saw a genuine item though, but I believe Ron Ruggins did find one. The link mats were just ordinary link mats, uh, just badged by Vauxhall. The seat covers, yeah, they were they were nice. Um, David Whiteley actually found a genuine clear plastic one. That's the only one I've ever seen. And the plastic mats, well, they were plastic mats. So these are the armrests. Uh, they were only f uh, an option for the standard model and they had a um, band of anodized aluminium in the center because the, the armrest is actually in two halves, the top half is vinyl and the bottom half is thick gray plastic. Moving on to the petrol flap lock. Yeah, I had one of those, found that a jumble. Um, has a chrome excursion uh, that I actually on my one had re-chromed and it made it look like brand new. It's just an arm that comes down and catches the um, the inside of the outer wing so the flap can't be opened. Now the bumper buffers, oh yes, a most sought after accessory for the Series 1s. But you only ever found them on the fronts, no one ever put them on the backs. Well you, you couldn't put them on the backs anyway of the early cars because the exhaust ran through the bumper. It would look daft having uh, just one on the near side projecting outwards. But yeah for the, the 58s I suppose you, you would have a pair on the back as well because they are buffers. Well, it's the exterior sun visor. Oh, next to the clock, the most sought after uh, accessory. Now on an earlier video on LJD, I mentioned that the sun visor was a series one option and not really for the series two. However, on reading up on it, uh, yeah, it was available for series two, but no one that I knew of at the time ever found a series two one. They were always the series ones with the brackets for a series one. And the reason the brackets were different is if you look at the leading edge of the roof on a Series 1, it ends vertically. Whereas on the Series 2, it ends curved, uh, so it blends into the upper windscreen moulding. So, um, yeah, I, <laughs> I'd love to see a Series 2 one, but I don't think I ever will. The interior sun visor and vanity mirror. Well, yeah, on standard cars, there was no near side um, sun visor it was an option which is why it's in this of course <laughs> uh, the vanity mirror yeah i did find one and i think i put it in xot but memory's fading after all these years 
Right, we're moving on now to the spare wheel cover. Um, yes, um, very, very nice accessory if you could find it. It was incredibly rare, even in the 1980s. Ron Ruggins, though, he advertised for one and found one. Coat hooks, yep, uh, had those in XOT. Um, one interesting thing about these rear coat hooks that, that sat over the rear doors, uh, the screw holes are provided in the, uh, in the roof panel. Um, they are, they have a longer projection than ordinary ones that you might find in the jumble, which made them a little bit on the difficult side to find, but they were, they were found. Anti-glare mirror, never ever saw one, forgotten it even existed. Okay, let's quickly gloss over the last uh, 12 items. Uh, first being the stone guard kit. Two highly polished um, stainless steel wheel arch protectors they were to stop stone chipping. The bonnet lamp was just a, a bulb and a bracket clipped onto the underside of the bonnet. Uh, so as long as the side lights were on, it was on. The trunk lamp, now that had a mercury switch. So when the boot lid was opened, that would come on. And I suppose it was to light the dark area of the uh, front end of the boot. The towing attachment, I never ever saw one, not a single one. Wouldn't even know what it looked like, to be honest. Moving on, the glove box lamp. Yep, that was uh, a bulb in its little holder that uh, fitted into a nice little cutout in the uh, glove box itself. Um, the switch was one of the door switches, uh, so that when the, the glove box door was opened and closed, it hit the switch, turn it on and off. The glove box lock was the same lock as the ordinary one, but just had provision for a key. The wheel rim embellishers, yeah, we all like those. Uh, if we could find them, we put them on the car. They were great. The reversing light kit, yeah, XOT362 had one of those. You, if you look at XOT's restoration video, you'll see those on the boot. The, uh, the lamps were actually for the 1961 PA. They were the front side lights. The automatic light switch kit, well, that was for the uh, standard models because when you open the doors on them, the interior light didn't come on because there were no switches. So basically you've got the switches and a little bit of wiring loom. The rear compartment mats, well, that was for the estate car. The ashtray, yeah, the standard models didn't have an ashtray on the back, back side of the front bench seat, so you could put one in. And the twin horn, well, the series one standard models only came with one out of the two horns so i suppose this was the second one if you wanted to fit it the valentin accessories <laughs> oh no no chance no one ever had them um although i did uh, frequently visit my dad's uh, Vauxhall dealership that he worked in he was a sales manager so i probably saw all of those but of course in the 60s when i was there <laughs> i took obviously no notice whatsoever well, that's the end of the book. Why have I added Vauxhall two pedal control to this list? Well, it wasn't an accessory. It was an option that was available to the F-Series. 1958, uh, Alfred and Alder produced this uh, two pedal control uh, for Newton Bennett. Uh, it was called Newton Drive and it did away with the clutch pedal. It used solenoids, a vacuum control unit, and uh, a touch sensitive switch that replaced the gear knob on the, uh, the gear change. And um, the, ob the idea was that you touch the, the gear change, it operated the clutch uh, through various solenoids, relays, and vacuum, as I've already said. But it was incredibly unreliable, and it was so unreliable that all all cars that had it had it removed and original clutches were fitted it was an absolute disaster but for someone like me who has a bad left leg it would have been a godsend but of course never ever found one but i do actually have the gear lever brand new and in its box laycock overdrive for another option um and it says brilliantly engineered new victor well, you didn't find them. I don't recall finding any on Victors. That They were plentiful on the PA Cresta and Veloxes, uh, but I never ever saw one fitted to a Victor. Um, it would be interesting to see, see how it performed though. Well, there we go. All done and dusted. I hope you enjoyed my 
little mini series, I suppose we could call it. Just a refresher, it started off with the XOT362, my 1960 Series 2 Super, followed by LJD352, my 1957 Series 1 Super, and the accessories film which you just watched. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, um, these were all filmed during the recent coronavirus outbreak, so it just leaves me to wish you all stay safe and thanks for watching. Bye bye.